I feel she's in danger. I feel she's been in danger, but I do feel she's alive. Tonight, a desperate plea for answers from the parents of 25-year-old Carly Russell. We want everybody, every across the world, to be on the lookout for Carly Russell. In one word, what have the past few days been like? Horrific. Do you believe she was fighting for her life? Oh, she definitely fought for her life. There were moments when she physically had to fight for her life, and there were moments when she had to mentally fight for her life. So this was the plea of the parents of Kali Nicole Russell, the Alabama woman who disappeared for two days and reappeared on her own, alleging that she had been kidnapped by some people after she stopped on the highway to attend to a kid who was wearing a t-shirt and a diaper. Some people have celebrated her return, called it a miracle, amongst some also not believing everything that she's saying. Personally, I think that she's lying and I'm here to break down why she's lying and also let you know how my suspicions coincide with what the investigators have also come out to put across in their press conference after taking statements from her. If you are ready for this true crime story breakdown, just buckle up and let's go. Now, before we get into today's video, kindly support our campaign against femicide by going to the comment section and just type in please stop the femicide or hashtag say no to femicide and then share the video afterwards to push the campaign forward. Additionally, our analytics lets us know that most of you are watching our videos without subscribing. This is hurting us badly and we plead that you kindly hit the subscription button to help push the campaign forward. Now, if you're also a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. And then we get to the case at hand. Kali Nicole Russell. Currently, I think she is equivalent to Juicy Smollett and the boy who cried wolf. But let's take it back a notch. On the 13th of July, Kali Russell said goodbye to her family to get some food for them, but then never came back home. It later turned out that she had called 911 that she had seen a kid on the interstate highway and that she was stopping to help this, help this little kid who was in a t-shirt and a diaper. Then she was still on the phone with the 911 dispatch and she started shouting. They had muffled sounds but they didn't hear any kid. And fast forward. Kali Russell was nowhere to be found. So, an investigation ensued. Police came in, search parties were formed, and we got to where we are now, where nobody could find Kali Russell. Nobody knew of where she was. A family friend or a family member had allegedly said that she had told them these things that some people were sort of trying to get her after she stopped to help the kid and you know a whole bizarre story was now out there two days later carly russell shows up allegedly half naked to her home and says that she has escaped her captors she goes on to tell an elaborate story of how a man and a woman allegedly took her captive when she stopped to help this kid and went on not to tie her hands because according to them they didn't want to leave any evidence that she had been picked up and tied up when the story first came out you notice from my channel that i didn't do the story because for me personally it didn't add up the way she disappeared and the fact that it was without a trace but she had actually stopped to help a kid and at the point of her being grabbed, even though she was on a live call, nothing could be heard from the kid. I think by the age that she was describing this child was, I'm expecting this child would have at least made a sound when this child was grabbed as well. Maybe a scream, a yell, something. But it seemed too well tailored a case to be real. That, that was what my instincts told me at first, so I decided to just lean back first, 
not to be unempathetic but to lean back first and wait and see how this will unfold because something didn't add up either these kidnappers were so perfect or the story was too clean and as the days went on my suspicions began to grow and actually begin to look like they were justified because when Carly Russell came back home, the story she told to the police now seems not to be adding up. And the police have actually put out a press conference debunking almost everything that she said, if not all, and bringing it back to the point where my suspicions had actually started from. I think that she's lying. But before I get into why I think that she's lying, let's first go and watch excerpts from the press conference that the police put out about Carly Russell's story. And then I'll come back and give you my two cents. Let me say up front, this investigation is not over. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data includes several internet searches and the days leading up to her disappearance that I think are very relevant to this case. The term, you have to pay for an amber alert was searched. The day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. A search for the movie, Taken, a film about abduction was conducted. As we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related, related to this particular case. So there you have it. And I'll just highlight the key things he said, and then I'll get into my reasons why I think Carly Nicole Russell is trying to pull the wool over the eyes of people, literally. So like he said, they have worked in concert with the FBI and Secret Service. Now, these are top investigative bodies. They should have found something if there was something and it turns out that they haven't been able to establish any form of evidence to corroborate the fact that there are any kidnappers out there responsible for kidnapping Carly Nicole Russell. So you would see that this statement is an indirect way of saying that Carly Russell actually lied. They were so generous and respectful of her such that if you listen to the entire con uh, press conference, you would notice that they were just trying so hard not to use the word lie, that she is lying. But they said that in several, several synonymous ways. Now, they, he goes on to talk about the fact that they even noticed that she searched for the movie taking, searched on Amber Alert, searched on how to take money from a register without being noticed. That is actually stealing. From a register that is what i think unless maybe i have misconstrued but then again there are other parts of the press conference which they even go as deep as establishing that carly russell actually stole some tissue and other petty stuff from her employer on the day of her alleged disappearance that is how thorough this investigation was so i struggle to wonder why they, they would fail to find kidnappers if there were any. I hope you get my analysis. If they've been this thorough, why would they not be able to find any shred of evidence that confirms that there are kidnappers in this case? Because this case escalated so fast. It went from Carly Russell being missing, most likely abducted, public outcries saying that this case demands attention just like the attention we've given to the collapsed submersible that happened recently people were advocating for that we have instances where even a couple who have lost their daughter in 2019 under such similar bizarre circumstances as Carly Russell was trying to portray joined the search and advocacy for Carly Russell's search out of the pain that they have felt for the loss of their daughter so you could see there was genuine concern so imagine how it felt when she turns up on her own and she's now peddling a story that seems like she might be lying and that is my suspicion still i suspect that 
she may be lying. Maybe I'm not in a position to say 100%, but I think that she may be lying because her stories don't add up. Unless new evidence turns out to now corroborate anything that she's saying, it's looking so, so, so much more like Carly Russell is actually lying. And if she is, then the question is, why would she lie about this? And that is where it also gets sketchy. But then another reason why her story doesn't add up is, why would kidnappers kidnap you or abduct you and fail to tie you up or restrain you, but they will just blindfold you instead and leave your hands unrestrained? Why would they blindfold you? The essence of that, I'm not a criminal, but common sense just tells us that anybody who blindfolds you is trying to prevent you from seeing something that you might either share as information if you get to escape or you are released, which could come back to lead to their arrest. So if they blindfold you, their intent is that they don't want you to see anything. Common sense further goes on to establish that if you are going to blindfold somebody because you don't want them to see anything, then you might as well restrain their hands. Other than that, they could lift the blindfold with those same hands that you haven't restrained and peek at you and get the information and share. And you blindfolding them would now be useless because you failed to restrain their hands. So why would Carly Russell be blindfolded without being restrained such that her hands are free? Is it that there was this bond of trust between herself and her so-called abductor or abductors. I don't think so. I think that any serious criminal or abductor would check out these abduction 101 physics. That is what I think. This is not to be unempathetic, but I think that there's a flip side of the case that we should also take seriously where she might actually be creating fear and panic and also trying to gain attention through this but in the process putting the society at large in a state of fear and panic because when this case this case came out although people were advocating for her to be found and all when she turned out people were now trying to get the police to establish are we safe is our community safe is there a kidnapper out there that we need to be worried about. And as the police, it's their job to determine this and apprehend this person if this person actually exists. That is when it became more suspicious that Carly Russell's case is not adding up and her parents now moved from previously seeking help from the entire world, literally, to now saying that they want some privacy. It just doesn't add up to me. If that is the case, then I think that Kali Russell could be in for a bumpy ride because now she could be the subject of an investigation which, if found guilty, could be prosecuted for actually peddling a lie, wasting the police time, wasting resources, filing a false police report because she has filed a report detailing some of these stories which are now being questionable. And the other questions are, did she have an accomplice? Are her parents aware if she turns out to be lying? Are her parents aware of this plot or they are also being lied to by her? And more importantly, why would she even lie? The plot thickens because when she was found, her boyfriend was so excited, he was actually advocating for her when she got lost. And when she was found, he was so excited on social media, thanking God and all. But when it began to look like she might be lying, he has reportedly deleted her from his social media handles, such that he has deleted all contents of both of them on his social media handles. I don't get this. This story doesn't add up. I think that there is more to it, so I'm very happy to hear the police say that the investigation is not over which I believe means that they are going to get to the bottom of it. At least they've established there are no kidnappers out there. Now, let's go and establish what really happened and whether Kali is lying and if she's lying, why she would lie. But here are some reasons why I think she could be motivated to lie. The first, and these are my thoughts. I'm not saying they are facts. 
The first could be that she needed attention at that level. She is alleged to have tweeted which a tweet which actually suggests that she might be having relationship issues with her boyfriend where the tweet was allegedly depicting the possibility of him having cheated on her with a stripper. If that is the case, I think this was all planned to gain attention of a sort. I don't know what level she aimed for it to get to. I don't think she was thinking she would hit the national news like it did. Maybe it escalated beyond what she had actually calculated or estimated for. That's the first thing. But then the second thing is maybe it could be the money. But I'm not leaning into that possibility so much because although they set up a GoFundMe and all in her Anna, you know, I think they raised about six thousand or sixty thousand dollars there, but I'm not sure of the amount is in the sixes. But then I don't think they are also that broke to resort to such means just to get some money. A part of me thinks her parents might not be in on it if she's lying. Maybe they were also fooled. But a part of me, a small part, thinks it's possible they could be in it though. Although I'm mainly not leading towards that. And then there is the third bit where maybe she thought this was her way to also become a celebrity of a sort. There are some twisted people at that level. Who don't mind setting up a whole fake abduction just to hit the national news, get all the national and worldwide attention, and build a celebrity career out of that? You know, there's a financial gain in all this. Aside whatever GoFundMe or whatever is in there, people will get their names out there, will start publishing books, getting movie deals, and all just to tell their story. And it's something that some people can do. There's actually a, a case of a lady who faked her own abduction and sexual abuse and pinned it on some men who had nothing to do with it. And one of them even ended up having his family broken. And he actually did some jail time before this lady was uncovered. So it is not an impossibility that this could be one of her reasons. And the fourth could actually be that I'm wrong and she's not lying. But as it stands now, everything is looking as though she is the female version of the Juicy Smollett case and also the boy who cried wolf. Or in this case, the girl, 25-year-old girl who is crying wolf. Is there really a wolf? Was there a kidnapper or an abductor? We wait on the police to conclude the investigation. But these are my thoughts out there. It is not a conclusive statement I'm making that she's lying, but as it stands now, it's very, very likely that she is lying. Let me know what you think about this. What do you think? Is she lying or not? Let me know in the comment section. Until then, please stay safe out there. Crazy things are happening. People are getting kidnapped. Some people are not getting kidnapped and faking to get kidnapped. Some people are getting kidnapped. Some people are not being found. And if it turns out she's lying, I think it will be a big blow to the black community because over there in the US, the statistics I've seen, there's a very high rate of murders and kidnappers of black women such that people are pushing for cases of missing black women to be given more attention by the security agencies because some feel that it's not giving enough attention as when it comes to other issues out there. So if she is lying, then she is rather creating a negative reaction towards cases of missing black women where some may feel is a hoax. The police being professional, I don't think they will deliberately turn a blind eye to cases just because they involve missing black women. But then they, her actions, if it turns out she's lying, would begin to create a stereotype against cases or reported cases of missing black women. I think she's doing women and black women for that matter a very big disservice if it turns out that she's lying and if she's lying i hope she gets prosecuted actually subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so leave your comments in the comment section don't forget to share the video and leave a comment on stopping femicide to help push our campaign until then 
We'll catch you next time. Stay safe out there.